can't play now, Lassie. Boomer and I have to finish this painting before Uncle Peachy gets back from fishing. <coughs> Don't get so excited, girl. Boomer and I'll be finished soon, then you can go leaf hunting with us. I sure hope we're luckier today. You know, we only have two more days, and Bud and Ray already have seven leaves. Just think, a whole gallon of ice cream for a prize. Well, let's hurry up and get finished. some rags in the barn. Jimmy, look! Hey! Who said there wasn't any fish fighting in that lake? Here, feast your eyes on this. Oh, boy! Look at him! Huh, couldn't bait my hook fast enough? I'd no sooner drop her in the water than, bam! The fish would grab hold. <laughs> They was practically begging to be caught. Oh, well, I'll cook them for you, Uncle Petrie, but you'll have to clean them. Uh, that's some catch, all right. You betcha. I told you I'd have good luck today. It was this cat's eye charm that did it. Cat's eye charm? Yeah, it's a uh, kind of a gemstone. Real name is Chris Oberl or something. Way it's cut, light catches it kind of funny and makes it look like a cat's eye. <laughs> A friend of mine gave it to me years ago. Said his paw found it down in Manila when he was serving under Dewey. Well, what are you two looking at me like that for? That charm really works, I tell you. Uncle Petrie, I had no idea you were so superstitious. Are you going to have those boys believing that nonsense? Well, why shouldn't they believe it? Nobody's caught any fish in that lake for almost a month now, have they? And what about my back? Your back? Yes, my back. Been bothering me off and on now for weeks. But since I found that charm last night, <laughs> haven't felt a thing. Slept just like a baby. That's psychological, Uncle Petrie. The power of suggestion. Or coincidence. Wait a minute. What about that woman's intuition you're always talking about? You believe in that, don't you? Well, certainly, but that's different. Different? Nothing. I'd a heap sight rather believe in something I can see than something that's just a fancy name for guessing. Thanks. Say, I doggone near forgot to thank you fellas for doing my chores. You finished yet? Almost, Uncle Petrie. But we had a little accident. Oh? And Lassie and Mike spilled the paint. <laughs> well, now, there's no use of crying over spilled paint, is there? I'll take care of it. We're going out into the woods to look for more leaves. It's a school project. Two boys to a team. We're supposed to find as many different kind of leaves as we can. And if we find ours first, we win a whole gallon of ice cream. Well, then, with a prize like that at stake, maybe you better take along my good luck charm. Gee, thanks, Uncle Petrie. With that, we can find them easy. And don't be too disappointed if your luck isn't as good as Uncle Petrie's. Well, you boys can run along now. I'll take care of that paint. You better wash up first. And Uncle Petrie, hmm? don't you forget to clean those fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lassie, come on, girl. Gosh, they think we're mad at them. It's all right, Lassie. In a few minutes, we're going to the woods. We've got a good luck charm. It's a cat's eye. <laughs> Push me a little higher. There, I got it. That makes eight. If this keeps on, we're gonna win that ice cream for sure. 
It's his cat's eye charm. Just like your Uncle Petrie said, it brings us good luck. Why don't we have lunch now? Just one more leaf. Boost me up, Boomer. Cut it out, Lassie. I'm trying to get some leaves. Stop it! You better stop it, or I'm going to send you home. Gosh! What's the matter? That's why she was trying to stop me. It's poison oak. Hey, it is. Thanks, Lassie. Thanks a lot. Boy, is our luck good. We could have been in real trouble. Let's sit down and eat. Oh, gee, that's a good idea. How many do we have now? Twelve. That's what we haven't got. That makes 13. As long as you have this good luck charm, 13 will be a lucky number. little squirrel. It's nothing to get so excited over. We're going home now. If you want to stay and bonk at that squirrel all day, it's all right with me. too serious, is it? You can probably find it tomorrow. But how will we know where to look? We must have walked a jillion miles through those woods. And if we don't find it, Uncle Petrie might have nothing but bad luck from now on. We'll get some lanterns and look for it tonight, Uncle Petrie. Sure, we'll stay in those woods until we find it. I should say you will not. If you want to go looking for it, tomorrow soon enough. It's my fault anyway. Timmy's not to blame. I could have lost it just as easy as you, Boomer. We're both to blame. Now, hold on a minute, boys. Maybe I uh, kind of exaggerated the powers of that charm a bit. Quite a bit. Are you sure you won't have any bad luck since it's gone? Well, now you boys forget all about it. If you find it tomorrow, fine. If you don't, I'll get myself another good luck charm. I'll be over first thing in the morning so we can get started early. Okay. Bye, Boomer. Bye. Bye, Boomer. Goodbye, Mike. Hey. Uncle Petrie, what's wrong? Oh, it's that darn old back of mine again. Must have pulled a muscle or something. Isn't that the worst luck?
Didn't you forget something? I said my prayers, Mom. Don't I usually get a kiss? Sure. Is Uncle Petrie feeling better? Much better. Uncle Petrie's had back strain before. Now, don't worry. I sure hope we find that luck charm before anything else happens. Oh, now, try not to take it so seriously. Uncle Petrie's back had nothing to do with that charm. But, Mom... Some people are unlucky with all kinds of charms. Others are lucky without any at all. It's just sort of a uh, oh, coincidence. Something that happens. But, but we did find those leaves, and Uncle Petrie cut those fish. That's just coincidence, Timmy. Those things would have happened without the charm. I guess so. I guess all of us are a little superstitious at some time. There's nothing really wrong with it, as long as we don't let it grow out of proportion to the things we know are true. Does Uncle Petrie believe that? Yes. I'm sure he does. All right, now. You go to sleep. Try not to think about it anymore. Night, Mom. Just fine. You fellas going out in the woods now? We'll be back the minute we find that cat's eye. Come on, Boomer. Good boy. It just gotta be someplace. We just gotta find it. Mom said it's just co coincidence. She says not to worry if we don't find it. Yeah, but she's not the one that lost it. Something terrible might happen. Like what? Gosh, I don't know. Look what happened to your uncle's back. And just this morning, Bud and Ray were bragging about how many more leaves they had than anybody. How many more leaves did they have? They wouldn't tell me. But from the way they talked, it must have been a lot. They were already planning what flavor to get when they won the ice cream. We better find the charm just to be safe. Come on, Lassie. Help us find the charm. after we lost that good luck charm. Maybe I'll never get out of here. Don't worry, Boomer. That and Uncle 
teacher will be here right away. Maybe something will happen to Lassie, too. What was that? Just a squirrel. He won't hurt anything. But maybe there's something around that will hurt him. Shall I go look? Don't leave me. It's a wild cat. Don't leave. Maybe he won't hear us. just called the Weather Bureau. They said this is just a freak electrical storm. There won't be any rain. Oh, Timmy and Boomer should have been home by now. Oh, I'm sure the lightning and thunder will send them running. Well, if they're not back in a few minutes, Paul and I will go after them. Paul? What is it, Lassie? Where are Timmy and Boomer? We better take the truck. You stay here, Ruth. We'll go get the boys. To you, Boomer. He got his foot stuck in that rotten log. Well, I'll get the axe from the pickup. Never mind. I'll get it. Yeah, let me have a look here. Oh, we'll get you out of here in no time, Boomer. Stand back, Timmy. I'm over here, Timmy. Now hold still, Boomer. Try it now. Easy. There you are. Can you stand? I'm all right, Mr. Martin, but my ankle's kind of stiff. Uh, you'll be all right, boy. Yes, sir. Only we didn't find your charm. We looked everywhere, Uncle Petrie. Well, no matter none, fellas. I can always get me another one. That won't be the same. We might have bad luck forever. Oh, I wouldn't say you've had bad luck. You both look in good shape. You know, it could have been a lot worse. Sure. Here. Hey, Timmy, you may still win, you know. And even if you don't, it won't be because of that charm. I guess not. <laughs> Here are your leaves. already here, Lassie. You and Mike have fun anyway, even though we did lose that cat's eye. Oh! <laughs> 
better be careful there, Paul. If I was you, I sure wouldn't stand on that ladder. Why not, Uncle Petrie? Well, because you might fall or something. Are you still worried about the bad luck? Well, you, you just can't be sure. First my back, and then Boomer's accident. Who'll be next? It might strike anywhere. Uncle Petrie, you sound like the cereal at a Saturday matinee. Why don't you go on... Wonderful. The teacher said we had three more leaves than the second place team. You can take this into the store in town, Dad, and get the ice cream for it. And you didn't even have the charm with you. Well, doesn't that prove what I said was right to me? Seems it ought to show that not all good luck comes from charms. What about that, Uncle Petrie? Well, I guess your dad's right, Timmy. Maybe that old charm wasn't so hot after all. Matter of fact, now that I think of it, my back's been feeling fine all day. Well, I'll be doggone. It's the good luck charm, and Lassie found it. You know, could be. Lassie probably found it while the boys were in school. What do you mean, Uncle Petrie? Well, I mean, that's why the boys were so lucky. If Lassie already had the charm when they were in school winning that prize, then it wasn't really lost. Well, we don't know for sure, do we? <laughs> Good girl, Lassie. Yes, sirree. Mighty fine ice cream, thanks to you boys. And my charm. I don't know, Uncle Petrie. I've been thinking it over. From now on, we're going to make our own luck. That's right. And besides, I've got all the luck I need right over there. <laughs> she wants a second helping. She sure earned it. young fella. That ought to fix your wagon. Hmm. We'll see about that. Three. My fighting blood is just getting all boiled up now. May I borrow my son's attention? But, Mom, I gotta give Uncle Petrie another chance. Oh, only for a minute, dear. I need his help. I have to make up my mind if this jelly's good enough to enter in the fair. Well, that ought to stop any game. That's good, because I want your opinion, too. Mmm. Ah. Mommy. Well, what's the verdict? Well, it tastes like first prize jelly to me. Me too. Me too. Oh, I'm not sure you can be trusted. Took you too long to make up your mind. <laughs> Lassie hasn't even touched it. Well, that's the verdict. I think Lassie's hearing something outside. Oh, it's just the wind. I'll open the door so she can see there's nothing there. Poor thing, it's half drowned. Well, cats have nine lives. I only got one. That, that wet kicks up my rheumatism. Let's close the door. Oh, now, wait a minute. Couldn't we... 
Oh, come on, let's take it in just till we're sure the storm's over. Of course. But what about Lassie? You expect her to put up with the cat? <laughs> yellow color. Can we name him Mustard? Yes, I think that's a very good name for him. Uh, let me examine that sick paw. Can we keep him, Dad? May we, dear. May we keep him, Dad? Can we? Well, uh... Lassie likes Mustard, don't you, girl? <laughs> We'll give him a try. Mustard's gonna stay. Well, <clears throat> my diagnosis is that uh, this cat must have sprained his ball. Is it bad? Well, I know medicine that'll make him as good as new. We buy the ingredients in town tomorrow. Some uh, jixon weed, Indian herbs, snake oil. Dr. Petrie, would you mind prescribing a little sleep for Timmy? It's way past his bedtime. Can Mustard sleep with Lassie and me? No, dear. I think one pet in the room is enough. Mustard sleeps in the barn. He's got a big job to do. Can't he sleep with us and tell Uncle Petrie's medicine makes him well? <sighs> Thanks, Dad. Come on, Lassie. Last one in bed is Lazy Bone. you go to fish or play, remember... I'll feed the chickens, sort the nails, and gather the eggs before I do anything. Good boy. Well, let's get started. I want to get back by noon. Well, just hold your horses, Paul. It won't take a minute. There. Now, just you stay there and take it easy. As soon as I get back from town, I'll brew up a salve. We'll have you good as new in no time. <laughs> All right, wind her up. Poor thing can hardly budge. I'll move the saucer so he won't have to stick out his tongue. Bother you. That old fly was buzzing around your head. I'll ask Mom for some more milk. Good girl. Take care of mustard.
Spend 65 cents of his own money picking on a mess of herbs. Oh, you're a kind man, Uncle Petrie. Oh, I'm kind, too. He spent an hour of my time picking that stuff out. Wait a minute, Lassie. Just as soon as Timmy helps me carry this stuff inside. Give a look in that barn, and you'll take back what you said about my wasting your time picking out those herbs. <laughs> Mustard, you're a real champion. That grain scavenger must have put up a pretty good fight, but it was no match for you. No, sir, not even with that injured paw. <laughs> Mustard, the winner and new champion. I apologize. Yeah, what do you say, Mustard? <laughs> Now, if you can keep those pests from feasting on my corn, you'll be the star boarder around here. This calls for a celebration. Milk is on the house. Come on, Lassie. Lassie, come on, girl. Ring to a boil six times, cover tight, and leave to steep overnight. You stir to the left 13 times and to the right six. No, twice right. Oh, it's to twice the right. <laughs> Sounds more like a prescription to open a safe rather than heal a cat. Hmm. Here, Lassie. Yep. Well. For valor in line of duty, for ridding our barn of a grain thief, we raise our glasses in a toast to welcome Mr. Mustard as a full-fledged member of the Martin family. Yes.
never did it before. Well, we're going to stay here the rest of the night? Well, let's go to bed. Lassie, you know, eh, Geeter? Let's go, Lassie. Phew, that stuff smells. Oh, worse the medicine smells, the quicker the patient gets well. How much longer do we have to soak him? Well, just about uh, now. There we are. I got him. Mm. Better. Much better. What happens now, Doctor? <laughs> yeah, what he needs is a little gentle exercise so that leg won't stiffen up. I'll take him. All right, but no running or dashing about. Just easy and slow, you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Come on, Lassie. Come on. Come on, Lassie. <laughs> no, Lassie. I don't want you to be mad at Mustard. I want you to be friends. Now, how about going for a walk? <laughs> no, Lassie. Not so fast. Uncle Peter said Mustard had to walk slow. Come on, Mustard. Let's go, Lassie. Slow, Lassie. Slow. I know you didn't bother those chickens. No, Lassie, you mustn't. Stop being jealous of Mustard. You have to be friends. You take it easy, Mustard. We'll wait for you on the other side of the woods. Bye. Come on, Lassie. Lassie, come on. No, Lassie, come on. We'll wait for Mustard over by those big trees. I just saw you running and jumping. Come on, Lassie. Let's go home and tell them about mustard. Mustard. There now. Lassie, you stay there. 
there. Lassie, you stop that. Stop it this minute. Uncle Petrie. Hold Lassie, will you? She's after mustard. What happened? Well, Lassie chased the poor cat. He limped over to me and, well, just look at him. Really, I don't know what's gotten into Lassie. Lassie, mustard's gone. It isn't. Lassie. Whoa. You catch your breath. Now, now, take it easy, boy. I got my breath now. Go ahead. A big mountain lion attacked Mustard, and he ran and jumped and everything. There wasn't anything wrong with his paw at all. Now, Timmy. But, Mom. Mom says that Lassie chased the cat. We don't understand. Lassie saved Mustard from a mountain lion. And then Mustard made believe he couldn't walk. And when I told him he was bad, he ran home. Hmm. That's some story, boy. It's not a story. Mustard's a storyteller. <laughs> Lassie never ate those eggs at all. Mustard did. And nothing's wrong with his paw at all. Lassie proved it. Timmy, dear, you mustn't let yourself get so worked up. But, Mom. I know, dear. We think it's wonderful that you love Lassie so much. Sure, son, but... Uh... I have an idea. Let's uh, let's just go into the house and simmer down, shall we? We can have some cookies and a nice drink to cool off. Hmm? Well, that's a first-rate idea. She ran away, and I don't blame her. Lassie! 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 I'm hungry enough to eat a steak raw. Well, the menu is leftovers. Well done. Anything you do is well done. And I must say, there's nothing like a plow to sharpen a man's appetite. Seems to me a couple of things are missing. Now, Timmy. Oh, Lassie. I wonder what's keeping them. Lassie, help me. been the same ever since Mustard set foot in this house. It ain't fair to blame a cat for what a dog does. You don't suppose Timmy's right, do you? Oh, it's a little unbelievable. Oh, my jam. Jumping Jehoshaphat. Who'd have believed it? And Timmy didn't invent those stories. Any cat that can jump up to my jam shelf is well enough to do anything. He also could have leaped up and gotten at those eggs in the chicken house. Oh, Paul, I'm worried now. Let's call Boomer and see if Timmy's over there. Uncle Petrie... I'll take the car and go the back way down to the creek. Never mind, Jenny. Thanks. 
Oh, Timmy, I'm so glad you're here. We, um, uh, we have something to tell you about mustard. You were right, darling. I apologize, Lassie. To you too, son. <coughs> me too. Limping me out of 60 cents worth of medicine. And you can put that paw down, mustard. You're just an old faker. If you were able to jump up to that shelf, you can just as easily jump down. I'll have to warm up the leftovers again. Uh-uh. Let those leftovers be leftover. This calls for a celebration. Let's go out to eat. Oh, Paul, it's so expensive. Well, that's how we'll pay for the lessons that Timmy and Lassie taught us. Well, I've been educated, too. I'll pay half, Paul. <laughs> Come on, Mom. Let's go. Well, all right. Lassie's going, too, isn't she? Well, sure. She's a guest of honor. She's going to get a big, meaty boom. Uncle Petrie. You help me get those dishes and put them in the icebox. We're going out for dinner. Look, over there. It's Smart mustard. mustard. sorry about leaving him alone while we go off for dinner. Nobody need ever feel sorry for that cat. And it all goes to prove that animals aren't much different than humans. Some of them like mustard take, while others like Lassie give. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, girl? <laughs> He had to stay home to look after things. I bet she missed me. I'm sure she did. It looks like she had company. Asa Winkler, Rural Equipment Renovator. Wow! It's a fix-it man. Knives sharpened, fences repaired. Why, well, we haven't had a handyman around here I don't know how long. Well, there aren't any jobs that need doing. Oh, what about those screens out front? Oh, well, Uncle Petrie said he wanted to fix those himself when he gets back from Creston. Hmm. I wonder where this Mr. Winkler is. Help! Help me, somebody! Help! Help! <laughs> Here I am, this way, up here. My, my, am I glad to see you folks. What on earth? I guess you're Mr. Winkler, aren't you? Yes, sir. Didn't see anybody home and thought you might be out in the orchard. Only then you watchdog caught me. Say, that's some mean watchdog you got there. Lassie? Mean? She chased you up this tree? Oh, now, wait a minute. I know. I'm sorry, folks, but that's how it was. She wouldn't hurt you. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of, Mr. Winkler. Come on down. Well, uh, I'll just wait till your dog gets out of the way. Thank you. And I uh, don't want you thinking I'm, I'm, I'm sore about the pants. About what? Well, they, they was torn already, and, and I ain't blaming her. No, I'm not. Lassie tore your pants? Ma'am, it was my own stupid fault for letting her bite me in the first place. Oh, dear. Come on, girl. But Lassie doesn't bite anybody. Never mind, son. Come on, Lassie. Well, don't you go punishing her. She's just being a good watchdog. That's all she was. Here, l let me uh, help you down. Uh, here. Careful. Well, I just broke the skin in a few places, but... Ooh. We'll take you to the doctor right away. You sure will not. It's just a nice, clean wound from a nice, clean animal. I'm just terribly sorry. You just show me where your bathroom is and loan me a little bandage, ma'am, and I'll fix it up in no time. Yes, sir, Sonny, I'll stop making trouble and I'll just be on my way. Oh, unless, of course, 
You folks got some odd jobs need to be done. Uh, Mr. Winkler, I've been looking around, and I find we do have some screen that needs fixing. Well, now, that's mighty kind. Uh, as soon as I finish my pie, I'll... Oh, that's mighty kind, mighty kind. There, now. Your trousers are finished. Hope they're all right. Ma'am, them pants ain't never been ordered with such needlework. My, just look at that. <laughs> well, you can change them out in the barn while I get the screens. Uh, Boomer's out there, son. He's waiting for you to play. You finish your milk, dear. You know, folks, I really didn't expect to find any work here at all. It only takes one look to see how well things is kept up at your place. Your leg hurt? No, no, it ain't nothing. What I was going to say is, I hope you folks ain't feeling beholden on account of this here. Oh, no, no, we, we really do have some screens that need fixing. Come on, I'll show you. Well, that's good. Ma'am, I want to tell you that just eating your cooking make up for a man being et by lions and tigers. You know, that pie of yours, why, that pie is... Uh, that pie is... well. <laughs> oh, mighty kind. Oh, there's a pup. Oh, it's all right. Why don't you take her inside now, Boomer? Dad told me. Wow. Is that the man she bit? Last never just bit anybody like that in her whole life. I've been looking for blood or pieces of pants, but I guess they're all gone. I bet he kicked her first. Which teeth do you think it was? Boy, look at these. Oh, but they're as long as sharks. I bet he hit her with a stick or threw rocks at her. Boys, um... Why don't you and Lassie go rabbit hunting this afternoon and just forget about Mr. Winkler? I'll wrap up the rest of the pie for you. He ate it. Oh. Well, look, he'll be gone in a couple of hours, and in the meantime, it's as he says, we are sort of beholden to him. What's beholden? Oh, it means that we're obligated to him because of Lassie's mistake. Lassie's mistake? Look, I've, um... I've got some fresh donuts. I'll wrap those up. You can take them instead. Is this the one? Is this where it was? Hey, maybe we could find some blood on the ground. I bet you he's a crook. Huh? Has Lassie ever been wrong about anything? I don't know. She's never gone after anybody that's good, has she? No. Dogs know about people. Only there's nothing for a crook to steal. He might do something worse. Look at her. She's probably thinking we ought to be watching him right now. Are you sure that's what she means? Sure. She means we gotta keep out of sight. Hey, like detectives. Wow. Come on, we're gonna spy on that, Mr. Winkler. What kind of a crook do you think Mr. Winkler might be? A Bad crook.
You see that? Did you? You see him? Your mom went out and he went in. Yeah. Shall I run and find your dad, shall I? No. Wait until we get evidence. What are you doing? We're getting evidence. Mom, look. Get in there. What on earth? Oh. Oh, howdy, Miss Martin. I was looking for a glass, but I couldn't find one. Oh, all right. Oh, thank you. I just uh, forgot my garden gloves. See, ma'am, I was just noticing how dull your knives are. The... Well, I thought Uncle Petrie sharpened those. Well, he didn't do too good a job. There's, there's nicks in them here, see? Look. Oh, I'd never noticed that before. Well, now, ma'am, I'd be finished with them screens pretty quick, and I could fix these up good as new for only 12 cents a piece, or a dollar thirty a dozen. Well, now, I don't know. Well, now, look who's here. Uh, hello, boys. Say, I noticed your dog snooping around after me again. Well, Mr. Winkler, all right. I, I think perhaps you'd better sharpen the knives. You won't regret it, ma'am. You just don't know how good it is to find nice folks like you. Now, what were you trying to tell me? What have you been doing? We're just going out to hunt more rabbits, that's all. Timmy, Boomer, time to wash for supper. Mr. Martin, oh, Mr. Martin, wait up. Oh, hello. I thought you'd left by now. Well, putting in that barn wing it took longer than I figured. But uh, I sharpened up your scythe and a couple of saws. I just knew you'd want that done. Mm. See. I happen to remember I didn't mention my pump service. Best in the state. Your what? Well, cleaning and pump repair. You know, that's my real specialty, Mr. Martin. That's why I was taking a look at yours in the shack there. Oh, wait a minute. That's a pretty big job. Well, yes, sir, but only about three days at the most, I'd say, to overhaul everything. And for nice folks like you, Mr. I... Winkler, I told you that Uncle Petrie helps here on the farm. He just cleaned out that well not too long ago. Matter of fact, he lost his glasses down there. Oh. Is that so? I think he did a good enough job. Now, how about having some supper with us before you leave, huh? Mighty kind. Mighty kind. Did he drop something? Oh, Mr. Martin. The darndest thing. Lightning just couldn't strike in the same place twice. What's the matter? You saying that about your uncle is my timepiece. I wonder could I left it back by the truck. <laughs> Yes, one of my old granddaddy gave me. Solid gold railroad watch it was. The only place I was leaning over was back at the well there. Oh, it just ain't possible. Well, come on, let's go look. Oh, there you are. Timmy, go on in the house and tell Mom we'll be along pretty quick, I hope. But, Dad, look what Lassie found. Over there. It must have fallen out of your pocket, Mr. Winkler. Well... Good for you, Lassie. That makes up for a lot of things. 
Well, uh, much obliged. Hmm? Come on, everybody. Supper time. I'm so glad the score is a little more even now, Mr. Winkler. Lassie found your watch. Soon as you dropped it. Are you ready for a piece of cake? Well, now, that's mighty kind, ma'am. Mighty kind. Thank you, ma'am. And I'm sorry there aren't any more jobs around here, but that's the way it is. Well, the trouble is these days is too much of this here to do it yourself, even among nice folk. Well, maybe some of the neighbors will have some odd jobs for you. Oh, it ain't likely. What I should have done was stop at one of them run-down places back on the highway, or even like that dingy place down the road there. What's the matter? Did I say something wrong? That's my house down the road. Oh, the brown one. Say, there's some beautiful crops there, I noticed. No wonder your pa ain't had time to mend all of his fences. But how come you ain't eating at home if you live so close? Because my mom's at late choir practice, and my dad's still at the pig auction. Oh, that's too bad. Nobody home, eh? Well, I'll have to wait till the next trip, I guess. See, and that reminds me, I'd better be on my way. I got miles to go before dark. So I'll just fetch my tools and I'll be on my way. So, goodbye, everybody, and, and thanks again. Uh, Ma'am, as for that cake of yours, why, that cake, it, it's, it's just, well, you're mighty kind, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you for being so nice about Lassie. My house is supposed to look like it does. It's painted brown. Now he's leaving. We'll never know what kind of crook he is. Hurry up, woman. Eat faster. All right, the game's over. Now run along. I said run along. <laughs> Doggy, come on. Nice doggy. Good doggy. <coughs> I guess that'll stop you from following Asa Winkler around. After the watch, maybe she's still being a detective. I bet you I know what he is. A dog stealer. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
Why is he not in the truck? We should have got your father to come with us. We gotta have evidence. Now, if he's a dog stealer, I wish we'd have told Dad anyway. When he's not looking, we could run into the house and telephone. Here, Billy. Here. Come on, you bearded old bug. <laughs> because there's a crook here. Please, Jenny. Just tell her we want my dad. Your party line's busy. Here, let me try. <gasps> try to get him anyway, Jenny. Lassie's in trouble. No, Lassie. Not a crook. It's a crook. <laughs> What's wrong? Hey, you look like you were knocked out cold, man. What happened? Oh, I think it was the scooter. No, that wasn't it. I mean, I tripped, and then it was the ladder. That's what it was. The ladder was under the tree, and I must have bumped into, into it. Oh. You mean the ladder was under the tree? Look, how many times have I told you boys about no, this? No, Pop, wait! <laughs> What's he doing, loose? Say, now, that's some mean goat you got there, mister. I just stopped by to talk about doing some odd jobs, and when I got out of the truck to look for you, well, there come old Billy. I ran as fast as I could, but then there was the scooter, and the ladder and oh my no that's not what happened i suppose the pigs are loose too and the chickens oh just for one afternoon leave boys around pop please we weren't even here now get that ladder out from under that tree and get rid of that scooter no wait a minute get the goat first ralph you heard me go get him I know I'm a blame nuisance, but I only thought you'd like to have your fences fixed and your barn painted. A barn painted? Oh, I can't afford to have the barn. Oh, oh look, I'm, I'm sorry about all this. You stay here and take it easy. We'll take care of you, all right? Yeah. Look at that, that blasted goat. That boy. Sonny. Did you hurt Lassie? All day you've been snooping. I want my dog. 
What are you trying to do? Are you trying to spoil my business? Help! Help! Somebody! Help! Please! Help! Help! Dear, Lassie's going after that poor man again. Get him away from me! Somebody, help! Oh, my goodness. You all right? Boy, am I glad to see you folks again. Well, that's about the meanest dog I've ever... Dad, look! Lassie tore his pants again. And there's nothing underneath but his leg. Not even a scratch. Lassie never bit him at all. Paul, Ruth, what happened? Well, now, folks, just don't get excited. In fact, my leg is quite better, and my head, too. I guess I'm even fit enough to be on my way, and I think that's just what I'll do, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, folks. Sorry, Sonny. I told you last I knew I was a crook. Be sure and call me if you got any odd jobs to be done. Yes, sir. Might be quite a while. Won't it, Lassie? <laughs>